because we have made a commitment and a dedication of working with God. God is also committed of protecting and providing unto us. Divine protection and provision is for the saints of God. And I mentioned to you last week that there is angelic protection. The name of Jesus is given to us as a powerful armament, whether we can stand in and defeat the enemy. The Bible says the name of the Lord is a strong tower, and the righteous run into it, and they are saved. The Bible makes us understand the blood of Jesus is an armament, whether we can use as a, as a weapon against the enemy. The Bible says, we are can him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. It talks about the power in the blood. The Bible says the blood that speaketh better things than that of Abel. It talks about how powerful, how strong, how authentic, how immeasurably powerful the blood is for you as a child of God. And what am I saying? The blood is powerful equal to the name. The name is powerful equal to the blood. There is wonder working power in the blood of the Lord. Now that I'm saying is that we can depend, we can trust, and we can have hope and faith, confident in the Lord, knowing that there is nothing that the enemy can use against you. I'm letting you understand that the path to follow, path number one, is the path of righteousness. Righteousness and purity guarantees covering, guarantees protection, guarantees security. David said, if I hid iniquity in my, in my heart, the Lord will not have listened to me. The power to receive abundant breakthrough, the power to receive the blessings of God in your life, the power to receive breakthrough in your life, security in your life, is a power of righteousness. David said, lead me in the path of righteousness for thy name's sake. Lead me, you lead me in the path of righteousness. God, when you are led in the path of righteousness, when you make a decision to walk in the path of righteousness, your security, protection, provision in God is guaranteed. Why? Because God is interested. When his people are walking in purity, in holiness, and in righteousness, it is an environment that attracts the presence of God to come. And when God shows up in that atmosphere, the enemy is in trouble. Therefore, I've come to announce to you that don't fear whatever is going to happen in the days ahead. Don't fear what the enemy is planning and programming even against your life, don't fear the threatening words of the enemy because the point remains that God is on your side. And as you constantly walk in the righteousness of God, God is also committed of protecting, of delivering you from the plan and the traps of the enemy. I made you understand point number two, a path number two for you to walk on. To eliminate an element of fear. Fear is deadly. Fear kills. Fear destroys. Many are walking in the, in, the, in, the, in the river of fear. All over their life, there are so much that they fear. They are, into, they are intimidated by the threatenings of the enemy. Fear not. The Bible says in the book of 2 Timothy chapter 1, reading verse 7. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, the spirit of sonship. God did not give us the spirit of fear. Thou, for Isaiah chapter 41, reading verse 10, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed. I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee. With the right hand of my righteousness. God said, do not fear, for I will help you. Don't let fear overshadow you. Don't let fear clothe you. Don't let fear take over your life. 
God said, do not fear, for I will help you. God says he will help you. He will help you. He calls you, you'll be your protector. He will watch over you. Do not fear, for I will help you. And when you read Psalm, Psalm 56, reading verses 11, In God have I put my trust. I will not be afraid what man can do unto me. In God have I put my trust. Ladies and gentlemen, the Father, we are committed our lives to the Lord. The Father, we have made a decision to walk with God. There is nothing absolutely to fear. In God do I put my trust. What can man do to me? In other words, there might be schemes. In other words, there might be plans. In other words, there might be strategies put in place by men against your life. But David said, in God, do I put my trust? I put my trust in God. What can men do to me? Some trust in channels, others trust in horses, but we know the name of the Lord. And the name of the Lord, the Bible says, a strong tower, and the righteous run into it, and they are saved. There is security in the name of the Lord. I encourage you this morning to run to the name of the Lord. When you read the Bible in the book of Hebrews, path number three, that I want to talk about a place for security, a place for protection is to have faith in God. Faith in God is very important. When we have faith in God, all things work via faith. The Bible makes us understand. In the book of Hebrews chapter 11, reading verses 1, Now faith is the substance of things. Who for? The evidence of things not seen. Faith. Faith is what we hope for. The thing that we have not seen physically with our eye, but we hope for. Faith in God settles everything. Faith in God will bring to pass the purpose of God. Faith in God will turn things around in your life. It's about faith. Faith in God will settle the plans, the schemes, the strategies of the enemy. Faith in God will make things work for you in your life. Now faith is the substance of things. Who for evidence of things not seen. Faith is what you need to overcome. Faith is what you need to advance. Faith is what you need for divine security and divine protection. You need faith. When you declare it, when you have faith in God, there is the place to stand to receive the covering of God upon your life. They even do the enemy might come in like a flood, but the Spirit of the Lord will be your portion. God will defend the cause of your life. God will protect because of your faith in Him. Your faith. Your faith. Let not your faith die out. Let your, not your faith be weary. Do not be weary in your faith. Keep your faith. Walk in your faith. Stand in your faith. For faith, you will be able to conquer. And you will be able to champion over the adversary. What am I saying? The Bible says in the book of Hebrews chapter 11, reading verse 6. That is why faith is very important and essential in your life. The Bible says, but without faith, without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that seek him diligently. He that cometh to God must believe that he is. He that cometh to God must have faith in him. He that cometh to God must demonstrate faith in him. He that cometh to God must believe, believe that he's everything. Believe that he's a protector. Believe that he's a provider. Believe that he's a way maker. Believe in God. He that cometh to God must believe. And the Bible says, and without that kind of faith, it is impossible to please God. It is impossible 
When you don't have faith, it is impossible, the Bible says, to please God. In other words, it is impossible to get divine assets. It's impossible to get things pertaining to God, pertaining to the kingdom. It is impossible. It, 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 it pays to have faith to receive from God. It pays to have faith to get access into divine assets. Without faith, the Bible says you can't please God. You can't do anything. The things pertaining to the kingdom work through faith. The things pertaining to the kingdom come to pass in your life through faith. This morning, I have come to ask you, where is your faith in God? There might be a storm blowing. There might be circumstances. There might be challenges in your life. But where is your faith in God? You might have heard a bad news. Where is your faith in God? You might have had a terrible dream. Where is your faith in God? You might have been going through challenges in your life. Where is your faith in God? Faith is an instrument. Faith is a platform. Faith is a place to stand, to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Faith without it. The Bible says no one can please the Lord. What am I saying this morning? I'm saying that path number four, a path to walk on, to see the goodness of the Lord, a path to walk on, to be guaranteed that of a truth, God's covering is upon your life. Path number four is to trust in the Lord. Proverbs chapter 29, reading verses 25. Proverbs 29, 25. The Bible says, The fear of man bringeth a snare, but whosoever putteth his trust in the Lord shall be saved. The fear of man bringeth a snare, but he whosoever put his trust in the Lord shall be saved. In other words, safety, in other words, security, in other words, protection come via our ability to fear God. Not fearing men, not fearing what we see, not fearing what we hear, but the fear of God, the Bible says, will put you in a safe place. Oh, hallelujah. If I were you, I would develop a strong fear for God, not fearing anything that I see, not fearing my dreams, not fearing the vision, not fearing anything that the enemy brings to me, but I am going to fear God. If I fear God in my life, he will get me covered. He will get me protected. He will get me secured. It does not matter what the enemy will bring. God will be a protector for my life. Oh, hallelujah. The fear of God, the fear of the Lord, shall you shall be saved. When you fear the Lord, you shall be saved. You shall be secured. When you read Proverbs chapter, Proverbs chapter 30, 30, 30, read it verses 5. The Bible says, Every way of God is pure, and he is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. Every word of God is pure. In other words, the word of God does not fail. In other words, the word of God is not a counterfeit. Every word of God is pure. It's authentic. And they that put your trust in the Lord shall be saved. In other words, this is what I am telling you. This is the guarantee seal of the word of God. That if you dare put your trust in God in the midst of this storm, in the midst of these challenges, in the midst of this economic uncertainty, if you put your trust in God, you will be saved. Protection comes as a result of putting your trust in the Lord. Your trust in the Lord. Faith in the Lord will do it all for you, my friend. Faith in the Lord will bring you to a place of security, a place of protection, a place where the hand of the Lord will perpetually rest upon your life. Faith in God. Psalm 5. Reading verses 11. But let all those that put their trust in thee rejoice, O oh glory. Let all those that put their trust in thee rejoice. Why? Because why? Let them 
ever shout for joy. Let them ever shout for joy. I don't care what you are going through, but if you today listen to the word of God and put your trust in God, it's time to shout for joy in the midst of obscurity, in the midst of circumstances, in the midst of difficulties. It's time to shout for joy. Let them that put their trust in God rejoice and let them shout for joy. Why? Because thou defended them. Let them also love thy name and be joyful in thee. Oh, glory. Thou defended them. Who defended them? God. God will be your defender if you trust in him. Many in days like this are running for security. In times like this are running for protection. In times like this, don't know even where to go. But the friend, my friend listening to me, trust in God. And you will be a secure, a permanent security for you. A permanent hedge for you. They that trust in the Lord. The Bible says, they shall be joyful. Forever joyful. If you want to see the joy of the Lord, if you want to see the protection of God, if you want to see the hand of God working in your life, it is time to wake up. It is time to deposit, put your trust in the Lord. In the face of difficulties, in the face of uncertainties, in the face of calamities everywhere, in the face of challenges, it is time to put your trust in the Lord. In whom do you put your trust? Path number five. What God himself will do for you. Psalm 4. Read in verses 8. I will both lay me down in peace and sleep. For thou, Lord, only naked me dwell in safety. I will lay down and sleep. It is the Lord who makes me dwell in safety. In other words, it is not men. In other words, it is not any other cause. In other words, it is not any other name. It is the Lord who makes man to dwell in safety. I'll come to you that security is only found in God. Permanent protection is found in God. Permanent provision is found in God. He is a, a, the divine capability and ab ability and is able to give you all that you desire for in this life. Have faith in him. I put our both leg down in peace and sleep. The Lord only maked me dwell in safety. I lay down and sleep. The Lord will make me dwell in safety. I will not die. In other words, by leave. Then he said, I will not die. In other words, by leave. I will not, I will not be consumed by sickness. No weapon that is formed against me will prosper. I will lay down and sleep. But God will watch over me. God will defend the cause of my life. God will not give permission to my enemies to destroy my life. I will lay down and sleep. But God will keep me and God will watch over me. I've come to tell you this afternoon that as you serve God, as you give your heart to him, as you embark on divine assignment and divine activity, he is watching over you. He is watching over you. And therefore I come to tell you this very afternoon that fear not, for God is with you. Psalm 31, really verse 20. Thou shalt hide them in the secret of thy presence from the pride of man. Thou shalt keep them secretly in the pavilion from the strife of the tongue. Thou shalt keep them. God will keep you. God will protect you from the blood testament. People will come to steal. People will come to destroy. God will keep you from them. If you genuinely walk with God, if you genuinely give your heart to God, if you genuinely give your life to Christ, he is committed 
of protecting and keeping you. Thou shalt hide them in the secret that are of thy presence from the pride of man. The pride of man. Oh, let us kill him. Let us get rid of him. Let us destroy him. God will hide you from the pride of man. Men want to kill you. They want to finish you. To fulfill their selfish gain. Their selfish interest. But if you give yourself to God. Trust in him. Commit your life in, in, to the Lord. He will protect and he will defend you. God is able. Listening to me this morning, my friend. You can share. And let somebody also hear the word of God. My God is able. Our God is able to turn that situation around. Our God is able to come through this very day. Our God is able to turn around everything that you go through in your life. When you put your trust in him. Special protection is promised for you. As a child of God. When you walk right with God. When you abide in him. Conditions for having God's protection. Faith in God is essential. When you read the Bible in the book of Psalm. Psalm 37, reading verses 40. And the Lord shall help them and deliver them. He shall deliver them from the wicked and save them because they trust in him. The Lord shall help them. The Lord shall deliver them from the hands of the wicked. He will deliver them from the wicked. Why? Because they trust in him. They trust in him. Trust in him. Trust in the Lord. Have faith in God. Let your heart be full of faith in God. Because God will deliver you. In the time of storm, in the time of difficulty, he will deliver you because you trust in him. Not because of anything. But because you trust in him. Because you have faith in him. Because you have committed your heart to him. Therefore, he will deliver you. First Peter chapter 1. Within verses 5, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed at the last time. Kept by the power of God. When you have faith in God, you are kept by the power of God. When you trust in Him, you are kept by the power of God. And the enemy won't have any access to you. The enemy will try, but cannot penetrate. Why? Because you are kept by the power of God. I come to encourage you this morning. Have faith in God. Believe in Him. Trust in the name of the Lord. Because you will be kept by His power. When you are kept by the power of God, no demon can unkept you. When you are kept by the power of God, no principality can rise up against you. Now that's why the Bible says the enemy will come in like a flood. But the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. So you are kept by the spirit of God. You are kept by the power of God. And the enemy cannot no longer touch you. You must pray to the Lord in a time of need. Don't look to you sit down. Don't you sit there unconcerned. If you can enjoy the full security, full protection, it is your covenant responsibility as a child of God to pray to the Lord in the time of need, in time of circumstances, in time of situation, pray to the Lord because he is with you. Second Samuel 22, reading verses 14. I'll call the Lord who is worthy to be praised, so shall I be saved from my enemies. I'll call on God. He says, who is worthy to be praised, so shall I be saved from my enemies. So don't just sit down. In times of trouble, in times of adversity, in times of challenges, stop calling on pastor, but call on the name of the Lord. 
When you begin to call on God, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. God is a has a defensive force, power to rescue you, power to deliver you, power to set you free. The fact that you have confessed the name of Christ, my brother, security is being set up for your life. And the devil can destroy you. Witches can destroy you. You must call him. So shall you be saved from your enemies. Calling on God will bring security. You will be saved from your enemies. What am I saying? You must also be obedient and do good. Be obedient to God. Not only that, do good. Be obedient to the Lord and do good. Proverbs chapter 1, reading verse 33. But whosoever hearkeneth unto me shall dwell safely and shall be quiet, shall be quiet from the fear of evil. Whosoever hearkeneth unto me, whosoever hears me, whosoever becomes obedient to me, the Lord said that person will dwell in safety. It be obedient to the Lord. Obedience bring covering. Obedience bring protection. Obedience make you get access to divine asset. Obedience will cause you to mount up and get to where God has ordained for you. Obedience will bring down the hands of your enemies. Let us read the Bible to the book of Psalm. Psalm 81. Psalm 81. Reading verses 13 to 14, please. Let us hear the word of God. Psalm 81. 81, yes. Verse number 13 to 14, please. Verse number 13 to 14. Yes, sir. And it reads, if my people mm -hmm. would only listen to me, if Israel <laughs> would, would only follow my ways, how quickly I would subdue their enemies and turn my hand against their foes. Oh, praise the Lord. If my people will only listen to me, if, if Israel will hearken to my voice, how quickly, oh glory to God, how quickly will I come in, how quickly will I step into it, how quickly will I devour their enemies, how quickly, your obedience will cause God to respond quickly, your obedience to God will cause him to respond immediately. ASP. As soon as he hears your voice, he will come in. As soon as he hears you, he will step into the situation. My friends, obedience guarantee protection. Obedience guarantee security. Obedience bring the hand of God in your life. How quickly will I come in? How quickly will I avenge your enemies? How quickly will I destroy their plans and their schemes against you? If you will obey God, importance of doing your part in the kingdom of God is very important. Many comes to the Lord and they are minding their own business. Many comes to the Lord and they are going their own ways. Importance of doing your bits in the kingdom of God is very vital. And that's why I was just discussing earlier on before I came to the show with my brother. Many come to the house of God to mind their own business and to do their own agenda. But it is very important to do your bits even in the things of God. Hallelujah. It's very important. When you read the Bible in the book of Hebrews chapter 11, Hebrews chapter 11, reading verse 7, the Bible says, By faith, Noah, being warned of God, of the things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark, and he and the and the saving of the of his house, by which he commanded the world, and became heir of righteousness, which of which is by faith. So the Bible said, by faith, Noah being one of God of the things. They were yet to come. By faith, Noah, one of God, 
of things that were yet to come, moved with fear. Moved with fear. That is why David said, look at this man. David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of God. Joy took him to the house of God. Not, not complaining, not murmuring, not biting, not anything, but joy took him to the house of God. When Noah heard the voice of God, the Bible says he was moved with fear. You know, what kind of spirit do you carry to the house of God today? In what spirit? Do you go to the house of God today? Spirit of long dance. Oh, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. And what kind of spirit do you walk in into the house of God? You become so heavy. Whatever you do in the house of God, you want somebody to come and tell you, oh, brother, play the gun. Oh, brother, sister, sing the song. Oh, sister, do that. Oh, that. You want everybody to tell you something. But David did not say that way. I was glad there was joy in my heart when they said unto me, let us go into the house of God. And the Bible says, fear triggered in the heart of Noah when the word of the Lord came to him. Noah, today, Go and build me an ark, for I'm about to destroy the world again. The Bible says he was moved with fear. He was moved with fear. He was shivering because the Lord has spoken. He doesn't care. I don't care how long it's going to take me. I don't care how how many minutes it's going to take me. If the Lord has spoken, I don't care about anything. I want to fulfill the commandment of the Lord. What heart? Do you go to the Lord with? Do your part in this calling. Do your part in this great responsibility that the Lord has entrusted into your care. Do your part. Do your part, my friend. And God will honor you. God will surely reward you if you do your part. You know Noah was moved with fear. I'm so much scared. The Lord himself has said a word to me. Moved with fear. Many of us go to the house of God today. We are not moved with fear. When the word of the Lord comes, we take it all. This is for brother Susan so. Oh, this is for brother Susan so. We don't even care about it. But now Moses has been going about doing this. I know this word is for Brother Moses. We pass the word of God around for people, not accepting what God is ministering unto us. But Noah took the word for himself. God is speaking to me. And the Bible says he was moved with fear. Did you go to the house of the Lord to listen to, to listen to the word for your friends? To listen to the word for your family? To listen, um, uh, this is my sister. I wish she is here to hear this word. It is for you. It is for you. God did not allow her to come because that word that day is for you. To be able to receive it and go back and reconcile with her. Noah received the word of the Lord. And the Bible says she was moved with fear. Fulfilling the word of the Lord. Doing what God has commanded him to do. And that is why Divine security was made available for him. That is why divine protection was part of his package. That is why God took care of him and his family. Do you think these things come like something on a silver platter? They don't just come, but they come when you pay the price. When the fear of God becomes evident in your heart. When the fear of God becomes part and parcel of your life. When the fear of God becomes the driving force of your Christian life. The divine security and protection and provision becomes available unto you. Your life must be driven with the fear of the Lord. That is a place for you to receive security. That is a place for you to receive protection. The Bible says the hand of the Lord is not sure that he cannot, he, he cannot say. His ears are attentive to the credit of the righteous. His ears are always attentive. But you need to do your part. You need to do your part, my friend. In order to see the goodness of the Lord. I want us to open to the book, a portion of scripture in the book of Exodus. Exodus chapter 12, reading verses 21. Exodus chapter 12, reading verses 21 to 23. And let us hear the word of the Lord. Exodus chapter number 12. Yes, sir. Verse number 21 to 24. 
23, yeah. 23. Okay. Then Moses summoned all the lead, all the elders of Israel. He summoned the elders of Israel. And said to them, said to them, go at once. Mm -hmm. And select the animals. Select the animals. Mm -hmm. And slaughter the Passover lamb. Slaughter the Passover lamb. Take a bunch of hasho. Mm -hmm. Dip it into the blood. Dip into the blood. In the basin. In the basin. And put some of the blood on top and uh, on both sides of the door frame. Mm -hmm. None of you shall go out of the door mm -hmm. of your house until morning. Mm -hmm. Instructions. 23. Mm -hmm. When the Lord goes through the land to strike down the Egyptians, mm -hmm. he will see the blood on top and besides and sides of the door frame mm -hmm. and will pass over the doorway. Oh, praise the Lord. And he will not permit the destroyer mm -hmm. to enter your house. He will not permit the destroyer to enter your house and strike you down. And strike you down. Instructions. When Moses go through Moses, gave that instruction. The Bible say the people hearken to the voice of Moses. And they did as the Lord through him has instructed them. They did as the Lord through him has instructed them. How do you take the word of God? We know we take things very light. He said, oh, that, that thing, that instruction seems very silly. It doesn't make sense humanly. But I'm telling you, it carries a spiritual significance. It carries a spiritual significance because the old man has spoken. The God Almighty has spoken. The God Almighty has given his instruction through his servant. Therefore, you must be careful the way you handle divine instructions. Many of us are playing with the things of God. No wonder things are going very negative in our lives. My friend, I've come to wake you up. My sister, I've come to wake you up. When you make a step of faith into the household of God, be serious with whatever you do. Because it's very important meeting. The presence of the Almighty God is there. The Bible says, where two or three gather together in my name, the Lord said, There I am in your midst. Don't take service for joke. Don't take services for granted. When God gives instruction, do it with all your heart. If you don't believe in the man of God or the prophet, you better quit before it's too late. Don't play with divine instructions. Moses gave instructions. There's going to be a disaster. There's going to be a calamity. Therefore, mark your doors with the blood of the Lamb. So that when this angel of destruction comes here, that you will escape this destruction. He gave a very simple instruction. And the Bible says, they obeyed him. Do your bit and God will do the rest. Do not be so much stiff-necked do not be so much hardened hearted. Do your bit. Open your heart and do your bit. Do your bit. When the Lord, when, when they, they were short of wine in Kenya, the Bible says, the Lord's mother said, whatsoever he tells you to do, do it. It might not make sense to you. It might not bring anything to your memory that, oh, this process will give us why. But whatsoever he tells you to do, do it. And when we follow divine instructions, we see the glory of God. We see the hand of God in operation. We see the power of God manifest in our life. What am I saying this afternoon? It's time to wake up. Do not be disobedient. Do not be disobedient. But be an obedient child of God. I want us to read the scripture. Do not be disobedient. Be obedient child of God. Be obedient child of God. In the book of First Kings. First Kings 22. Reading verses 1 to 4. And then after that you read also 22, 29 to 37 for me. So let us hear the word of God. First Kings 22. 22. Verse number 1 to 4. Yes, sir. For the three years, mm -hmm. there was no war between Aram and Israel. No war between Aram and Israel. But in the third year, mm -hmm. Jehoshaphat, mm -hmm. king of Judah, went down to see the king of Israel. Mm -hmm. The king of Israel had said to his officials, Don't you know that Ramoth Gilead belongs mm -hmm. to us? Mm -hmm. And yet we are doing nothing to retake it from mm -hmm. the king of Aram. Mm -hmm. Verse 4. So he asked Jehoshaphat, Will you go with me to fight against Ramoth Gilead? Yes. Jehoshaphat replied to the king of Israel, mm. I am as you are. Mm. My people are yours. Yes. My horses are your horses. Yes. I'm done with the best for you. Okay. 
John 2, uh, 29. 29, please. Verse 29. Please, 37. Mm -hmm. to 37. Yeah. So the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, went up to Ramoth Gilead. Mm -hmm. The king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, You said, I will enter the battle mm -hmm. in disguise, but you wear your royal robes. Mm -hmm. So the king of Israel disguised himself Instructions. and went into the battle. He went into the battle. Continue. Now the king of Aram mm -hmm. had ordered his 32 chariot commandos, mm -hmm. commanders. Do not fight with anyone, mm -hmm. small or great, yes. except the king of Israel. Yes, sir. When the chariot commanders saw Jehoshaphat, mm -hmm. they thought, surely this is the king of Israel. Mm -hmm. So they turned to attack him. Mm -hmm. But when Jehoshaphat cried out, the chariot commanders saw that he was not the king of Israel mm -hmm. and stopped pursuing him. Mm -hmm. But someone drew his bow mm -hmm. at random and hit the king of Israel between the sections of his armor. Mm. The king told his chariot driver, wheel around mm. and get me out of the fighting. Mm. I have been wounded. Mm. Verse 35, all day long the battle raged mm. and the king was probed up in his chariot facing the Arameans. Mm. The blood from his wounds ran onto the floor of mm. the chariot mm. and that evening he died. He died. Verse 36, mm. as the sun was setting, a cry spread through the army. Mm. Every man to his town. Yes. Every man to his land. Mm. 37. Mm. So the king died mm. and was brought to Samaria mm. and they buried him there. Oh, hallelujah. How can he do? Divine instructions is very important. When we become disobedient to the will of God, to the commandments of God. And ladies and gentlemen, what brings to us is calamity. What comes to our door is destruction. What comes to our door is death. And friend, I want you to understand this point perfectly well. When we do obey the voice of God, there was nothing that would be able to stand against us. Let us look at this man called David. David was a young guy. David was going to face Goliath in the first time. David did not have any armament. I'm talking about ammunition. I'm talking about something that he can protect himself with. He didn't have anything going to face Goliath. And David said, you are coming to me with spear, with sword, with all these things. But I come to you in the name of the Lord. In the name of the Lord, today I'm going to kill you. And I'm going to cut off your head. He came to Goliath in the name of the Lord. Not carrying anything. And the Bible says, God gave David victory over Goliath. Obedience to God. David was a humble, obedient man to the Lord. He walked in the face of God fearlessly. He obeyed, abided in all the statutes of the Lord. He walked with God in his youthful age. And the Bible says, God gave him victory over the giant in God. Why? Because David remained obedient to God. Disobedience will render you to your enemies who open the cloth from your life and the enemy will see where you are hiding. Disobedient. We remove the hand of God from your jurisdiction and your territory and the enemy can inflict you and your children with sicknesses and diseases. Disobedient will bring so many calamity upon you and your family. Whatever you are listening to me, please say. Disobedient will bring misery, will bring destruction, will bring so many things in your life when you disobey. Deuteronomy chapter 3, verses 23, verses 22. Ye shall not fear them, for the Lord your God, God, he shall fight for you. You shall not be afraid, or you shall not fear the enemy. When you become disobedient obedient to God, you don't fear what the enemy is going to do. You don't fear the circumstances that you face. You don't fear anything that comes to you. You don't fear. You have the spirit of courage. Like Caleb and Joshua. We are well able to possess the land. We are not quitting. We are not going anywhere. For we are well able to possess the land. Even though we have seen the giants. We have seen the Anakites. We have seen all the Hittites and all the Tatai people. But we are well able to possess the life because God is with us. God is with us. If God is with you, you become so powerful. If God is on your side, you become so energetic. The presence of God makes you energetic. 
You don't need any weapon. You don't need any security. You don't need any covering from rivers, from rains, from trees. You don't need any protection. But God will be your source of security and your source of protection. Hallelujah. God will be with you. Hallelujah. You shall not fear them. You shall not fear them. So don't fear the enemy. I want us to read this scripture quickly. Don't fear the enemy. Psalm 37. Don't fear the enemy. Don't fear the enemy. Whatever, whatever threatening that they bring to you, don't fear. When you, have, you know that your heart is with God. Psalm 37. Read in verse 32. Psalm 37. To, to 33, please. Verse number 32 to yeah. 33. Yes, sir. The wicked lie in wait for the righteous. The wicked lie in wait for the righteous. Intent on putting them to death. Intent on putting them to death. But the Lord will not leave them in the power of the wicked. Oh, praise the Lord. Let them be condemned when brought to trial. Oh, glory to God. The Lord will not deliver you to the power of your enemy. The Lord will not deliver you. They are lying in wait for you. They want to destroy you this year. It is written that they will kill you. It is written that they will get rid of you. It is written that you will not prosper. It is written that you are going to have an accident. But I am telling you, they are waiting for your life. But God will turn their plans around for their, your own good. In the name of Jesus. God will turn their plans around. They are waiting for your destruction. The wicked. The wicked. The blood testament, they lay down for the righteous. They lay down for you, a child of God. But I've come to put faith in you. I've come to stand up your spirit. I've come to let you know that no weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper. No weapon. No weapon from your old mother house. No weapon. From your old father's house, no weapon from every corner in your life, in your territory, in the country where you belong, no weapon from against you will be able to prosper because God is with you, because He's on your side, because He is there to fight for you. I want us to quickly read this portion of scripture also in the book of Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 1. I want us to hear the word of the Lord. No weapon that is formed against you. The enemy will do anything for you as a righteous. It will not affect you. For you as a righteous. As I said, walk as obedient child to the Lord. Be sincere, be holy. Let your heart be fixed on the Lord. And I'm telling you the truth. I am a living witness. I'm a living testimony. I tell you the truth and nothing but the truth. God will prove himself to be God. Jeremiah chapter 1. Read in verses 19, please. Jeremiah chapter 1, verse number 19. Yes, sir. They will fight against you. They will fight against you. But will not overcome you. They will not overcome you. For I am with you. I am with you. And will rescue you. I will rescue you. Say yes, yes the Lord. Lord. Oh, praise the Lord. They will fight. They will come up against you. They will fight with you. But they cannot succeed. That is the good news. So the, if somebody tell you that the enemy will not come in, it's a lie. If somebody tell you that you are not engaged in a fight, it's a lie. There is a constant battle for the believer. There is a constant battle for the child of God. But they will come in, but they will not succeed. They will not succeed. They will not succeed. Left to them alone, you might have died because of the situation you went through. Left to them alone, you might have been destroyed because of the circumstances that came up against you. But no weapon that is formed against you that will prosper. No weapon. No weapon. They should have finished their assignment long time ago. They should have executed their plans concerning your life long time ago. But I'm telling you, no weapon from against you that will be able to prosper. You, you might have died long time ago. You might have been destroyed long time ago. But no weapon from against you will be able to prosper. God can cause your enemies. To fall and fail. You cause them to fall and they will fail. Their plans will not be effective against you. When you read the Bible in the book of Job, I want us to read that portion of scripture, please. Job chapter 5 talks about uh, the, this man. I want, I, want, I want us to hear that. Job chapter 5, reading verses 12 to 13. Let us hear that portion of scripture. Job 5. 
Yes, sir. Chapter 5, verse number 12 to 13. 12 to 13. He thwarts the plans of the crafty. Who thwart? God thwart the plan of the crafty. So that their hands achieve no success. Their hands achieve no success. He thwart the plans of the crafty so that their hands will achieve no success. I've come to announce to you that they that are pursuing you, if you walk in true righteousness and obedience to the will of God, he will thwart the plan of the enemy. And their hands will not achieve success in your life. They will not succeed in their plan, in their scheme, in their program against your life. They will not succeed. Finish it off, please. Verse 13. Yes, sir. He catches the wise in their craftiness. Mm -hmm. And the schemes of the willy are swept away. Their schemes are swept away. So the schemes of your enemies will be swept away. Amen. As you diligently seek the Lord. As you diligently commit your life to the Lord, as you diligently pursue holiness and righteousness, as you diligently seek for obedience, obeying the will of God, God will sweep, sweep away their craftiness, their plans against you, their strategies against you, their programs against you. Isaiah 8, 10 says, take counsel together and they shall come to naught. Speak away, speak the way. And they shall not stand, for God is with us. Take counsel. It will not stand. Let the enemy take a counsel, as we are bound to be ushered by the grace of God into the year 2018. Let the enemy take a counsel. Dream terrible dreams. You are going to die. You are not going to succeed. You are not going to make it. In the prophetic declaration, don't accept any negativity. Cleave to God. Isaiah 8, reading verses 10. This is the word of God. Not my word, the word of God. Take counsel together. It shall not, it shall come to naught. Speak a word. It shall not stand. For God is with you. If they take a counsel, it will not stand. If they speak a word, it will not work. Because God is in total control of your life. Isn't that wonderful? God is in control. God is in control. He's steering the affairs of your life. He's steering. He's in front of your car. He's driving you to your safe destination. You will get there, lady. You will get there, gentlemen. You will get to where God is taking you to. I declare prophetically upon your life that no weapon form against you that will prosper. God will take you to your destination. He has never failed and he will never fail you. Put your trust in him. They that put their trust in the Lord shall never be put to shame. They that put their trust in the Lord shall never be disappointed. They that trust in the Lord, the Bible said they shall be like a mountain Zion, which shall never be moved, but abide forever. Oh, glory to God. You will abide forever in the midst of their schemes, in the midst of their setups, in the midst of their programs, in the midst of their all the traps of death against your life. You will abide forever. And they will know that from today. They will serve the God of Isaac. They will serve the God of Moses. They will serve the Lord God Almighty. Because he's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. God is able to do the impossible. Take a counsel together. It shall not, it shall come to naught. Speak the word and it shall not stand. For God is with us. For God is with us. I am confident that God is with me. I am confident. That no weapon formed against me will prosper. I am confident that my life is hidden in Christ and Christ in God. Therefore, it takes the enemy too much to get access to where I am hidden. The enemy cannot. He cannot venture. Where your life is hidden, the enemy cannot touch it. It's time to wake up to the fact. It's time to understand divine provision. For security, divine provision for provision, divine provisions for your provision. What God has said in your life, what God has made available for your life. God has so many in store for you. You can write down a scripture, Isaiah 41, reading verses 11 to 13. So, we have so many 
bunch of examples of divine protection. God delivered his people in the Old Testament as well as the New Testament. So he is all by himself delivering his people and setting them free, destroying the plans and the schemes of the enemy against their life. He's God all by himself. I want us to read a, a couple of scriptures and we bring our message to a close. In the book of Genesis, Genesis chapter 19, Genesis chapter 19, Genesis chapter 19, reading verses 15 to 17, Genesis 19, 15 to 17. I want, to, I want us to touch a few examples of divine protection. Let us hear the word of God. Genesis chapter 19. Yes, sir. Verse number 15 to 17. Yes, sir. With the coming of dawn, mm. the angels urged Lot, saying, mm. Hurry, hurry, take your wife and your two daughters mm. who are here, or you will be swept away when the city is punished. Mm. Verse 16. Mm. When he hesitated, the men grasped his hand. They grabbed him. And the hands of his wife. And the hands of his wife. And of his two daughters. Two daughters. And led them safely out of the city. Glory. For the Lord was merciful to them. Praise God. Hallelujah. The Lord was merciful to them. God is an on time God. The Bible says, He said to them, I am about to destroy this Sodom and this Gomorrah. And therefore, He sent His angels. And the angels went there. When they were talking to them, the Bible says, and this men were, were being real long time. They didn't want to go. They were all remembering, looking at what they possessed. But the angel took them by the hand and said, it's time to go. Because the old man is about to destroy. Mm -hmm. The old man is about to mess up things in these cities. The old man, his anger is so much hard. Therefore, you can't spend five minutes here. He's about to come in a powerful way through his anger and to burn and to destroy these cities. And the Bible said the angels of the Lord rescued the Lord and his family out of their cities. Hallelujah. God is still in the business of rescuing us. God is still in the business of delivering us. God is still in the business of rescuing his people out of a mess generation. So we, and we talk about this word is getting corrupt. I mean, I mean, if you really, really love God, I am telling you, thousand will fall and ten thousand at our side, it will not come near you because God will give his angels charge over you. God will protect you and your family. If he did it for Lord and his family, I mean, he will do it for you. He will do it for you. He's the same God yesterday, today, and forever. Forever, oh God, thy word is set up. God of yesterday, today, and forever. He does not change. Have faith in God. Believe in God. Trust in him. Let your heart love God as never before. Because if he has said it, he will, he will do it. Faithful is he who has called you. Let us pull our last scripture and I'll bring it to a close. Let us quickly read something in the book of Joshua chapter 10. Joshua chapter 10, reading verses 11 to 14. Joshua 10, 11 to 14, please. Joshua chapter number 10. Yes, sir. Verse number 11 to 14. Yes, sir. As they fled before Israel. As they the fled before Israel on the road. Down from Beth Horon mm. to Azekah. Yes, sir. The Lord held large hailstones down on them, mm. and more of them died from the hailstones than were killed by the swords of the Israelites. Mm. Verse 12. On that day, mm. the Lord gave the Amorites over to Israel. Gave the Amorites over to Israel. The Joshua, Lord raised tongues on them. Joshua said to the Lord in the presence of Israel, mm. Son, stand still over Gibeon, mm. and you, moon, over the valley of Ajalon. Mm. Verse 13. So the sun stood still. The sun stood still. And the moon heard stopped. the voice of Joshua. And the sun stood still. And the moon stopped. The moon stopped. Till the nation avenged itself on its enemies. Glory to God. As it is written in the book of Joshua, mm. the sun stopped in the middle of the sky mm. and delayed going down about a full day. Delayed going about the full day. Verse 14. There has never been a day like it before mm. or since. Mm. A day when the Lord listened to a human being. Oh, God. Surely, oh, the God. Lord was fighting for Israel. Surely, the Lord was fighting for Israel. Surely, the Lord will fight for you. The Lord will fight for you. The Lord will fight. The Lord will defend the cause of your life. He that cometh to me 
I will in life no wise cast him away. He that cometh to me, I will receive him. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. He who comes to me, I will in no wise cast him away. The Lord did not only hear Joshua. He's the God the same yesterday, today, and forever. Those who are obedient to him, he will hearken to them. God is in the business of hearing his people today. He's the business of answering prayers today. He's the business of turning things around today in the life of the righteous. If you would dare give your heart to the Lord, if you would dare allow the Lord to be everything in your life, I don't know your challenges. As I bring my message to a close, I don't know the circumstances that you're going through. But I want you to have faith in the Lord. All things are possible. If you believe, if you have faith in the Lord, if you trust in him, God loved the world. He did not kill man. He gave his only begotten son. The Bible says in the book of John chapter 3 verse 16, He that is whosoever believeth in him, he shall not perish, but have everlasting life. And therefore I've come to announce to you, as I bring my message to a close, that everlasting life has its place in Christ and in Christ alone. So if you today want to accept Christ, all that I've been talking about, preaching about this afternoon, will become part of the packet for you. And you will walk in protection, you will walk in divine provision, and the purpose and the plan of God for your life will be fulfilled. I encourage you to come. Give your life to Christ. Make him your Lord and your Savior. It doesn't matter how turbulent your storm may be. He is a master. He is in control over the storm. The other day he calmed the storm of the disciples. He has the capability of calming your storm as well. Come to Jesus. Give him your life. Surrender everything to him. And he will watch over you. It's not too late. It's not too late. Forsake your old ways and come to the Lord. He will make it go. You will not die, but you will live. Oh, Pastor, my, my house, everybody, uh, people die every year. You will not die. I guarantee you will not die. Give your life to Jesus Christ. You will not die. And you can call me after this program. I'll pray with you. Believe in God for your life. And I'm telling you, you will live. You will live and you will not die. I want you to receive Jesus into your life. And after that, I'll pray with you. Now, Jesus, today, you mention your name. I, Isaac, as I believed in your word. Today, I know I'm a sinner. I serve to you, Lord, as my Lord and my Savior. Today, I write my name. Please, Lord, in the Lamb's book of life. And today, make me holy. Grant me the strength. To walk with you from today to your second coming. If you have said these words with me, I believe. As by the mouth we confess and we are saved. You are saved with all genuineness and with all willingness from your heart. The Lord has come to have his abode in your life. Find a church that preaches the word of the Lord. And that's a praying church. Buy what we call the Bible. And then learn the word of God. Grow from grace to grace. You can also go to our website www.opendooroutreach.org When you go there, you can find a, a, a resources and materials that can help you also to grow. We have online Bible course that can help you grow from grace to grace. And I believe that your life will never be the same. That the grace of God, the glory of God will continue to shine on your life. Call me after this program 079-4920-33 six zero or you can see the information on the screen contact us after this program and we'll have a very good time with you let us have a word of prayer even now whatever you are listening to me from our heavenly father and god your word has come for today i pray for my dear listeners my friends and my loved ones who go listening to me from every corner of god in the world i pray your grace i pray your power i pray your protection and your provision for their lives in the name of Jesus Christ, if anybody is going through challenges of their life, I declare divine 